Listen up. This is important tools for your arterial system. And trust me, this information you cannot afford to ignore. We're talking about the silent killer lurking inside your arteries. But not just any plaque. We're dissecting the difference between calcified and soft plaque. And why that distinction could mean the difference between life and death. So let's start with the heavy hitters. You have Cavadex, EDTA, vitamin K2, neurokinase, serapeptase, and magnesium. These are your calcification busters. But here's the million dollar question. If you've got soft plaque or inflamed arteries, do you really want to start chipping away at the calcified cap? Because that cap might be the only thing keeping you from massive coronary event. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to ignore it. I'm saying we need to be smart about this. We can't go in blind. That's where advanced testing comes in, and I can't stress this enough. It's not optional, it's crucial. So first up, coronary CT angiography, short for CCTA. This is the gold standard, folks. It's non-invasive and gives you a 3D roadmap of your heart and arteries. We're talking high-resolution images that show both calcified and soft plaque. It's like having x-ray vision for your cardiovascular system. But we don't stop there. High-resolution magnetic resonance angiography short for MRA is another tool in our arsenal. It's particularly good at sparring soft plaque in various areas including those critical carotid arteries now let's talk about blood work i've got a top three list for you but do me a favor do share like and please subscribe to support my channel and the fight against heart disease so number one myelopyroxidase short for mpo we want this below 460 picomoles per liter. High levels, that's a red flag for unstable plaque. Number two, lipoprotein associated phospholipase A2, short for LP, PLA2. Now keep this under 200 nanograms per milliliter. If it's high, you're at increased risk for plaque rupture. And three, oxidized LDL short for OXLDL. This should be below 60. It's directly involved in foam cell formation in your artery walls. But don't stop there. Add homocysteine and TNF-alpha to your panel. We're looking for a full picture here, not just a snapshot. Snapshot, sorry. Make sure your homocysteine levels are between 7 and 9 and for TNF-alpha, levels should be below 125 picograms per milliliter. So now, let's break down soft plaque as it contains 30-40% to 40 cholesterol and cholesterol esters, 20-30% to 30 macrophages and foam cells, 10-20% to 20 smooth muscle cells, 15-20% to 20 extracellular matrix, and a mix of other components that contains dead cells, cellular debris, and components like growth factors. But here's a kicker. Let's start with damage to your artery walls, specifically the endothelium. And contrary to popular belief, your LDL level isn't the smoking gun here. It's about what happens to that LDL when it tries to patch up the damage in your arteries. It gets trapped, oxidized by free radicals, and that's when the real issue begins. So what's causing this arterial damage? Let's break it down. One, blood pressure fluctuation, 25 to 30% of the problem. Two, uncontrolled blood sugar, another 20 to 25%. Three, smoking, and I'm talking about the manufactured stuff, not natural tobacco or weed, 10 to 15%. Number four, processed foods, unknown ingredients, sedentary lifestyle and poor sleep. 10 to 25 percent and number five genetic is small but significant one to five percent so fix these five factors and you're well on your way to preventing soft plaque formation but here's a curveball for you why does calcification sometimes increase when you clean up your diet so picture this you get a coronary artery calcium score of 100 
you shape up, lose weight, eat right, exercise. A year later, your score jumps to 800. Panic time? Not necessarily. Here's the deal. That soft, dangerous plaque is actually calcifying. It's like your body's putting a hard shell around the threat. Is it ideal? Not really, but it's more stable than soft plaque. And that buys us time to implement the right protocols to safely reduce it. So let me be clear, this isn't about popping some supplements and hoping for the best. This is about precision protocols. It's about understanding exactly what's going on in your arteries and tailoring the approach accordingly. So don't play Russian roulette with your heart. Get the imaging done, get the blood work, understand your personal risk factors. Only then we can talk about targeted interventions. And remember, in preventative cardiology, Knowledge isn't just power, it's survival. This isn't about fear-mongering, it's about empowerment. Armed with this information, you can take control of your cardiovascular health. So what's your next move? If you haven't had advanced imaging or comprehensive blood work, that's step one. If you have, it's time to book a time for a consultation and let's create a personalized protocol plan. Don't wait for symptoms by then it might be too late, act now, your heart will definitely thank you.